Okay. So, hey, this is Donna Lewis and I am back on Zoom. So, what we are discussing today is the mind of truth. And uh, this is an interactive devotional, so your participation is required. <laughs> Um, even if you're watching the recast, that is totally fine. Just um, as you're watching, leave your feedback, leave your comments, answer the questions in the comments, and uh, do please feel free to share this video, uh, like this video. I am going to be um, posting this, you know, leaving this up on Facebook so that you can, you know, go back to it and refer back to it um, whenever you like. So, Transformation Tuesday, this is all about being renewed in your mind and being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And today we are talking about the mind of truth. And with that, I am going to share my screen with you. And let's see here. Got a few windows up here, and I am going to look here. Um, let's see. Here we go. Here, I'm going to open this up. And that way I can see your comments as they come in. And right now, I'm going to just blow this up so that you can see this. And here we go. So, hey, check out our new logo. This is Breathe Life Ministries brand new logo by ProArc Design. And I'm loving it. I am just loving it. I met these folks at the uh, Virtual Christian Expo and they have done a beautiful job on Breathe Life Ministries logo. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. And yes, welcome to Transformed Tuesday. This is a new element to Breathe Life Ministries weekly lineup. Every Tuesday, we are going to be um, having an interactive devotional. So uh, just mark that on your calendar for each week. And the question of the day. The question of the day is just a fun question. What is your favorite and most used emoji? Go ahead and put that in the comments. Whatever, whatever your favorite or most used emoji is, uh, share that in the comments. Mine it's a heart. It's a heart. Yeah, I, I love my heart emoji. I'm, I'm using it constantly. <laughs> okay, so with that, we're going to dive into the devotional. And um, I'm gonna just start us off with a word of prayer. Lord in heaven, we thank you and we praise you that your word is truth. And no matter what, we can count on it, we can rely on it, uh, we can bank on it. Everything else may fade away may crumble into the ground, but Lord, your word will stand forever. And so Lord, wrap us up in your truth and guard our hearts and our minds in your truth. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And be with the words of my mouth, Lord, as, uh, as I speak your word in Jesus' name, amen. And with that, let's just dive in. Okay, so starting with ver with uh, word number 16, in love with truth. And I'm just going to open up my book and read it here. 
in love with truth. Jesus is truth. Therefore, as his disciples, your deepest longing must be truth. Because of the Holy Spirit, you fundamentally know when something is off. The key is to trust that in intuition and investigate. Does what you are hearing or reading line up with God's word, God's nature, God's values? Truth is fresh, clean, and unencumbered. It flows freely and restores the listener. Though it may be difficult or even painful, though it may be difficult or even painful to encounter truth, the relief of freedom from bondage soon follows. Truth is life, and like an ever-flowing crystal clean river, the more you drink, the more you receive. John 7, 37 through 38 from the Passion Translation. Then on the most important day of the feast, the last day, Jesus stood and shouted out to the crowds, All you thirsty, come to me. Come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your inmost being just like the scripture says. Now, the devotional question that I have for journaling is to describe how you feel when you hear truth and it connects with you. Think back to a time when someone spoke truth to you. It could have been in a book you read, in a um, podcast you were listening to, in a sermon, or just in a friendly discussion with someone. But they spoke the truth and it resonated with you. How did it feel? How did your body respond to it? What did it feel like in your mind as you were listening to it? What was that feeling of, yeah, that, that is right? Go ahead and describe that. Think about it and describe it. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the screen and stop the share for a moment so I can take a look and see if anybody jumped on with me. Yeah, here we go. Now, I'm going to jump over here, and see if anybody's jumped on with me yet. I'm going to blow up the... Okay. Is anyone here? Not yet. Well, that's all right. Uh, if you happen to jump on with the, with the live cast, again, just... Go ahead and share your comments as you hear the questions. And again, that is just gonna be really helpful for other people who um, are listening along with you. So we're talking about truth. And there we go. Now we're going to discuss word 17, and I'm going to go back and put on my screen share. I'm going to blow this up. There we go. 
Okay, so now we're talking about the mind of truth. The mind of truth. 16 is all about being in love with the truth. And, you know, just like when we're in love with someone, you know, when we're falling in love for the first time and we just, oh, I, that feeling that comes over you when you just, I don't know, like maybe when you're looking at your newborn baby or when you're looking at um, that significant other in your life, uh, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, that person that you're just in love with. Think of how that feels. And that is how we are to be with the truth. The truth is something we are to be absolutely in love with. Jesus is truth. Well, now we're going to talk about the mind of truth. Ver, uh, word number 17, the mind of truth. This is some hard, hard knowledge. <laughs> truth is inflexible. It is what it is. It, it isn't going to bend one way or the other to fit our desires, to fit our wants, to fit our opinion. Truth is inflexible. This can be troubling. This can be a troubling reality when you want to bend the truth. Squish it just a little to fit your needs. In order to be set free, you must be willing to open your mind and accept revelatory knowledge from God's word. You must conform your mind to fit the truth. In so doing, there is liberty, beautiful and sweet. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, when you continue to embrace all that I teach, you prove that you are my true followers. For if you embrace the truth, it will release more freedom into your lives. John 8, 31 to 32 from the Passion Translation. So the journaling question here is, when have you squished the truth to fit your needs? List practical ways you will conform your mind to the truth from now on. What are some practical ways to embrace the truth and train your mind to conform to truth. Go ahead and put those in the comments. What are some practical ways you have learned to embrace the truth and conform your mind to the truth? Some practical ways for myself is um, journaling, journaling, writing it down, writing it down. Um, memorizing scripture has been huge. The more word you put in to your mind and in into your conscious, your consciousness, excuse me, consciousness. There we go, consciousness. The more you actually change the way you view the world, you begin to process it through truth. And distortions and outright lies, 
they just don't set well with you. They really don't. They, it, it, it rubs against you. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good. Even if it's a rosy picture, it, something about it just doesn't feel right and you don't want to receive it. Um, having people around you that are willing to speak the truth to you as well, that's another really important. Um, the people that you choose to surround yourself with People who know how to speak the truth in love. In love means with your best interest at heart. It, it's never appropriate to be hurtful to someone, intentionally harmful to their being. In other words, um, you don't speak an unkind word and say, well, I was just telling the truth. Unkind is unkind. Um, you know, you don't tell somebody you're ugly and your mom addresses you funny <laughs> and then blow it off by saying, oh, well, I was just telling the truth. You're just being mean. That's the truth. You're just being mean. No, the truth is when Mm. Oh, I don't know. What might be a hard truth? Um, oh, let's just say somebody's got um, type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, and they're constantly eating sugar. They don't stick to the meal plan that um, their doctor has prescribed for them. And they're complaining to you, I just don't know what to do, I don't have any energy, I'm always feeling sick. And it just really somehow resonates with you in your, you know, in your heart that it's time to share with your friend the hard truth that their eating habits are hurting them. So you don't want to have to share this with them, but you love your friend. You know it's going to hurt when you say it to them, but you know that it's more hurtful to not share it with them. So you say, my friend, I love you with all my heart. And I hate seeing you suffer with all of this fatigue and feeling so sick. And I am so worried about you because I know the doctor told you that you need to eat a certain meal plan and instead you're still eating all those those foods that hurt your body. How can I help you? How can I help you stick with your doctor's meal plan? That's speaking the truth in love. It's hard truth. It's going to make your friend feel uncomfortable, but you have their best interest at heart and you genuinely and authentically want to help them that's that's what speaking the truth in love is so anyway i'm just going to jump on here again and just see if i've got any comments to respond to and no i don't well i'm going to wrap it up then my friends I thank you for watching this. Again, please post in the comments, even if you're watching on the recast. Share this video with your friends. Let them know about Transformation Tuesday. Join me tomorrow, 10.30 in the morning Eastern, for our very first expert interview. You are going to love it. It's Risa Husbrook. She is going to be sharing with us about her life coaching and five simple steps to solve any problem. God bless, and we'll see you here tomorrow.